I tell you, I'm using Cantana more and more for my posterior restorative dentistry, particularly on replacing crowns. And why I like it is that, it, particularly with the prime mill, it's a really smooth process. It works well in the speed fire. And that's what I did today on a client where we had to upgrade, notice I used the word upgrade, we had to upgrade a crown, a PFM on number 31. When choosing a shade for Katana, go with one shade darker, unless the zirconia is going to be really thick, then I'm going to go two shades darker. Otherwise, it's going to be just a little too bright. What I have found in the Speedfire is that the thicker the zirconia, the little brighter it's going to be when it centers. And this is my basic workflow with Katana, particularly on a second molar, take the bite before you numb the tooth up. This is such a routine flow with Katana. I find that we have it down, particularly with the Prime Scan, the Prime Mill, the Speedfire, the parameters that I use in approximately would be aqua with a little green. And then on the occlusal table, it's the very light aqua, which is negative 75. I have found that there's almost no adjusting using this approach. My workflow, once I'm in the software, is to make sure I have clean margins with the prime scan. It's really easy to get those clean margins. And then once we propose, if you need to change marginal thickness, now's the time to do it. Otherwise, there'll be a reproposal. I find with the prime mill and the normal mill speed, which is the fine mill speed, that I don't need to thicken the margins at all, which I do on Emacs, but I don't need to do that here. So basically, the workflow would be making sure the restoration fits the arch. In a case like this, this was more end to end. I want to make sure she's not going to get a cheek bite situation, get the occlusion in the way we want it, and finish the interproximal and then off it goes to the milling unit. And I love the prime mill because we can set up the block where it does the pre-touch. So once you hit mill in the manufacturer screen, you'll hear that vacuum come on and we're machining without any delays of the burrs calibrating and touching. That's a really nice process. The other thing I find nice about the prime mill is that I find that the mill is smoother than the dry mill with the M6L. I have both milling units. As a result, once your restoration comes out of the milling unit, it's a lot faster to finish. All I do is refine the occlusal table a little bit more where I want those grooves to look just right and polish the actual surfaces using the JK04 Meisinger finishing kit that's made just for zirconia. Those pink and beige polishing wheels create a really nice pre-centering luster. So as a result, when it comes out of the speed fire, it's really easy to finish. All we do is use the green wheel, polish the margins, use the green twist, and then I polish up to the blue twist and then use a diamond paste. I'll fit it in the mouth, making sure the proximal contact is spot on, then check the occlusion. Any minor adjustments are made at that time with a polish, and then we cement it in using a resin glass ionomer. I like the 3M where we can activate a cure on the margin and it solidifies that cement so we don't get any moisture contamination as the final polymerization of that cement happens, which is auto-cured as well. So it's both light-cured and auto-cured, and that's the 3M resin glass ionomer. And then you celebrate with the patient. I have found Katana to be a really nice streamlined exercise. I'm using it quite a bit when I'm replacing PFMs where the crowns are subgingival. I have enough occlusal space. In this case, I want a millimeter and a half occlusal reduction to make sure that our design goes smoothly. If I have less reduction than that, because I don't have room, then I'm going to use a different type of zirconia where I can go down to 600 microns, like Zircat LT. But I'm really grateful for this nice, smooth workflow with the current system we have. It is something that I've used a lot in my repertoire, and I'm doing a lot more zirconias than I used to. In fact, I didn't think I'd be doing that many and it's probably overtaking over 50% of my clinical theater now, posteriorly that is. And that's if I'm dropping a margin sub gingival. If I have a margin high and dry and it's on enamel, then I'm moving over to Emacs, lifting disilicate. We'll bond that in using the adhesive technique, and I have found those to be very successful as well. I will post below several techniques on finishing 
you will find that sometimes the finishing videos are different brands but with zirconia the technique is the same whether we're finishing the surface whether we're infiltrating or whether we're staining and glazing so i'll post some link videos for for more details below make sure you watch those if you want more information if you have any comments or questions make sure you post them below i'd love to hear your comments i'll see you folks in the next video bye now